So this is my Chicago Electric Flex 125 welder. As far as I know, it's maybe the cheapest welder you can buy. It runs on 120 volt. Got it at Harbor Freight. I think nowadays they're about 125 bucks. I bought mine on sale for $90 in 2019-ish, I think. One of the reasons that it's so cheap is because they left out some components. If you look at the front panel here, it's pretty basic. Um, so you've got your wire feed speed, uh, your on off switch, and then you just got two voltage settings. It'll run 30 or 35 thousandths flux core. It takes a 20 amp circuit, which is interesting because it's only got a 15 amp plug. So they must not be too serious about that 20 amp thing, but I use a 20 amp circuit and it works just fine. I've never tried it on a 15, but there's a, a warning label here that to prevent nuisance uh, circuit breaker tripping. And it's got a, a little indicator light that tells you that you've tripped the, the thermal protection. And then here it tells you the duty cycle is 20%. So you, if you run it for two minutes, then you've got to let it cool for eight minutes in a 10 minute period. Hard to go wrong with 90 bucks, at least uh, if you're just starting off. So the missing components are what really separates this in both cost and capability from what you would buy if you were buying a, you know, a more well-known brand of flux core welder. The way I discovered this was I was looking on YouTube videos for welding tips and I found everybody doing flux core welding was using a higher dollar welder and they always started off by saying that you did flux core with DC electrode negative, which is the opposite of what you do with MIG, uh, which would, with the shield gas, which would be electrode positive. So I started looking into the workings of this welder and I discovered it's not electrode positive or negative because it's not DC, it's AC. Um, it's basically just a transformer in a box with a wire feeder. So it puts AC out to the electrode and to the best of my understanding that limits the power output that you can put into the, of heat you can put into the metal. And then uh, it also causes more spatter just because the current is you know, sw constantly switching directions 60 times a second. To make this more like a nicer welder, I've added the equipment to make it DC. This is a bridge rectifier. So what that does is it takes the AC wave and it takes the bottom half of it and flips it up to the top. So instead of a sine wave, then you get kind of a quick series of hills uh, and valleys. Um, that generates a lot of heat. So I've got its aluminum heat sink here. Down here I've got a 47,000 microfarad capacitor and then there's another one back there behind that circuit board. Um, there was not room in this cabinet to get both of them together so I had to lay one down. That's the, the one that's laying down and then here's one standing up. Now the function of the capacitor is to smooth out those hills. So instead of those deep valleys where the voltage drops to zero, the capacitor uh, charges up while the voltage is at the top of the hill. And then, then when the rectifier output drops, the capacitor then discharges. The more capacitance that you have, uh, the longer that will take. And so you wanna fill in the gaps there between each hill. It's still not a perfectly flat DC waveform, but uh, it's certainly better than, than a bunch of peaks and valleys or uh, an AC wave. If you're not familiar with capacitors, in some ways they're like batteries. They store energy. Uh, the main difference though is that unlike a battery, a capacitor will release all of its energy immediately if you give it a chance to. Which means, say it's putting out 38 volts or something. Well, that means when you shut the welder off, there's still 38 volts across those capacitor terminals and it will release all of that if you uh, short the ground to the electrode, even if you're uh, not running an arc and not pulling the trigger. What you do then is use, this is a, a bleed down resistor. So I put a 50 ohm bleed down resistor there. Like the capacitors just run straight across plus to minus so that once you've let go of the trigger, the capacitors drain into that resistor and it you know converts all that like that power to heat and found some calculations of the capacitors and the resistor and found that a, a 50 ohm resistor was good. Uh, that'll bleed down the capacitors to less than 5 volts within 5 seconds. 
after stopping the weld is about a 29 watts of power dissipation and that's so that's a 50 watt resistor so i got plenty of headroom there but at the voltages that we're talking about it's like a fraction of an amp uh, like three quarters of an amp so it's not something that's gonna be a parasitic loss this is a theoretical wiring diagram of the system so you see diodes of the bridge rectifier center left uh, and then you basically just have the capacitor wired in parallel from plus to minus across the rectifier output and the bleed down resistor does the same just wires parallel um, and then you have your minus to the electrode and plus to the ground clamp to wire all that up I basically just used the ground cable that came with it. It was only like six feet long, I think, which was not really long enough. So I cannibalized that, used that to run all the connections. Basically, I just I interrupted the output of the transformer before it went to the ground clamp and the electrode, ran it to the bridge rectifier on the AC side, and on the DC side, I have plus on this side and minus over there. What I've actually done here is I've just connected the bleed down resistor directly to the output of the rectifier. And then I did some things with the capacitors there just because of the, the packaging worked out well in that cabinet. I don't know if you've shopped for copper wire lugs for larger gauges like you would use in a welder, like eight gauge, but they are absurdly expensive. And since I was gonna need about 12 of them, I just went to Lowe's and I bought quarter inch soft drawn copper tubing use a tubing cutter to cut it to length, um, fed my wire into it, crimped it down really, really tight with a, uh, a pair of ice grips, got out my propane torch and some solder, and I soldered it up. I had to take one apart <laughs> because I, I messed up a connection, and it was really hard to get apart, so I'm pretty confident that these things are going to hold together in the welder. So the ground cable initially just went through a fitting here through this cabinet wall, and out. It wasn't removable. So since I cannibalized the cable, I got a connector. I guess, I don't know how it's pronounced. It's one of those things I've read, but I've never heard anybody say it, but it's like DINS. I don't know, D-I-N-S-E. That's a common uh, connector on welders. Um, looks like that. So now my ground cable is removable. I actually built a new ground cable as well. So here's the end that connects. And I used a, a four gauge cable and then this clamp, which is rated for 300 amps. So it'll probably be the last ground clamp I've ever buy, but it's stout too. So that spring is really stiff and it has a, a lot of good contact area. The clamp that came on this thing was basically a repurposed jumper cable clamp and it was garbage. Um, it basically just, whatever you clamped it on, it only made contact at the very points. So a lot of times I'd find it had almost tried to weld itself to the workpiece or my welding table or the frame of my Jeep that I was welding on. And it just didn't really have much spring pressure either. So I was always knocking it off. Another thing I've done here is this Folgers brand coffee can that I've used as a fan shroud. So the original arrangement had that fan just in open air, which is a horrible arrangement for a fan. Basically what that does is it just lets the air kind of blow out and recirculate and it doesn't really move very much air through the cabinet. It just kind of throws it around. But what this will do is it'll force the air to come in through this grill and the fan can actually, instead of recirculating, it'll actually blow through the cabinet and cool uh, the components here. The things that really need cooling specifically are this the transformer is this big chunk in the middle and the thermal cutout. I think is what that is right there. So that's what senses that the transformer gets too hot and it shuts you down and makes you wait until it cools off. Up here, my rectifier heat sink is just barely dipping below the top of that shroud. So I'm hoping that the effect of that will be hitting this heat sink and being directed up through it. Hopefully that'll keep the rectifier cool. It's a 150 amp rectifier, so I do have some headroom being that it's a 125 amp welder. For this first round, I actually glued the capacitors and the fan shroud down with hot glue. Now that worked pretty well. It, it set up fairly quickly. You know, so far so good. We'll see, you know, as I move this thing around and the enclosure kind of flexes, we'll see if that glue pops loose and I may have to go to something like an epoxy that can stick to metal and plastic. I'm less worried about the capacitors, but 
that fan shroud since it's so tight against this back wall and it's pretty much squeezed against the rectifier heat sink here it's just sheet metal so if it moves around and it puts any pressure on that fan shroud it may pop loose so moving this thing around without the sides on gets a lot of flex with the top half moving this way and sure enough my fan shroud popped loose on this side it's still it's still good on the other side but i'm gonna stick this back on there got the glue gun out i'm gonna put the sides on before i move it and i'll just have to keep an eye on it it's still i mean even popped off it's still not rubbing or anything i'd still like it to be attached